If you're going to make massive, lasting changes in your life, there are eight things that you have to know that probably no one has ever told you before. And today we're going to talk about them all at once, at one time, and in one session. Welcome to the Worship Center in Grind Road, Maryland, where Jesus is saving lives, saving souls, and saving futures. Now here's Dr. Steve Davis with wisdom tips, life treats, and gold nuggets from God's Word. As you and I are walking through the changes and problems, the trials of this life, we're bombarded by all of the challenges that are going on in the world around us and in people around us and in the situations that we're in. And it's overwhelming at times. Well, at least for me, it is. I can't handle all the things going on. And I know that before I can change my world, though, I need to change me. And guess what? I can't change me in any meaningful or lasting ways. You can't either. And I'm going to talk to you today about eight things you need to know before you can experience deep and lasting change in your life. Eight things that probably nobody ever told you all at one time or in one place or in one session. Number one, the first is the secret of tapping into God's abilities. When I come to the end of my abilities, that's when I have no choice but to draw near to God and to draw on his abilities. My abilities are very limited, but God's abilities are unlimited. David talked about this in Psalm 61, verse 2. He said, from the end of the earth will I cry to you, God. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. He says, because you, God, have been a shelter for me and a strong tower, that strong place of protection from the enemy. When we get overloaded, when we get overwhelmed, we have no choice but to come to God, and he never pushes us away. He draws us into himself, and that's what God is going to do. He's going to not only address your outer life, but your inner life as well. Because if all we do is work on our outside, but don't work on the inside, then nothing changes for good. Second is the failure of the geographical cure. A lot of people, when things aren't working out or they get in trouble or get an addiction or a DUI or a relationship breakup, they decide to start over again by moving. Or they might just change churches. Maybe they try to move away, get a new job, a new start, and all of that. And the problem is, is that they take themselves with them. I'm going to tell you, wherever you move to to get a new start, there's probably somebody from there who is moving here so they can get a fresh start. And we've seen that in churches where a person quits their church to go someone else and somewhere else that's wonderful and exciting. And at the same time, someone is leaving that church to find this church. There's no fresh start without a fresh heart. And we need a change of heart more than we need a change of address. Hey, while I'm thinking of it, please take a few seconds and share this video with a friend or two who has an appetite for the clear and nourishing, edifying principles of the Word of God. And also, this is a good time for you to subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss any of these teachings. Give us a thumbs up if you can, if you like this kind of content and message. I've got to tell you, I really appreciate it. Drawing your strength from the Word of God is the next one. The Bible is a message to humanity, a message to you, a message to me from God himself. Millions of God's people have drawn their strength and their wisdom and their guidance from God's Word, and they still do, from this Bible that's happened for thousands of years. And when God wants to speak to you, he mainly does it through the Scriptures. As you pray and read the Bible and then pray and listen to what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to you. We don't know the future. We don't know what it holds. There's so much we don't know, but we do know the one who does know the future. And we know the one who holds our hand through it all. Number three is that godly friends and associates are key. No matter where you are, you need godly friends. People who value their walk with God and who will pray with you and pray for you, set an example for you, people who will support you and encourage you, edify you, and when you need it, they'll even correct you biblically and in love. Ultimately, your life will be largely defined by the company you keep, by the people that you draw the closest to and let into your life. Linda and I made a decision years ago to make our best friends among the people of God and wherever we've lived, and we have lived in several places here in the U.S. and also overseas, we would always seek out people who love the Lord, and we would worship with them, we would fellowship with them, we'd grow with them, and we'd do life with them. Number four, 
That's the power and necessity of feeding and drawing on God's word, the Bible. One thing you'll notice in the Bible is that as soon as there were writings, scriptures, where God spoke to people, revealing his word, his will, his plans, his love for his people, you'll find that there would be those who would draw strength from his words and that they loved his words. They would read his words, they'd memorize his words, they'd study his words, and they'd treasure them in their heart. They'd delight in his words. And God still meets people as they draw near to him through his words, through the scriptures. These people that God raises up are people who have a love of God and a love for the Word of God, the Bible. Number five is listening to the Holy Spirit as you read and study and feed on God's Word. He makes it so it's always new and fresh to you. No matter how many times you've read it, God will still unveil new things in the Scriptures for you. God's Word is like manna from heaven. It's new and fresh every day. You can be familiar with it. You could have already read it and studied it and preached on it, taught on it and all of that, read it dozens of times. And suddenly the Holy Spirit will point out something in it that you've never seen before. That happens to me so regularly. It's amazing. I'll be reading something that I've read and taught on and I've studied and all of that. And then the Spirit of God points out something new to me. And it seems like every time I open my Bible, I'm still learning new things. The Bible says about itself that the Word of God is living and active. There's inspiration in this book. It's inspirited, indwelt by the Spirit of God. And I can tell you, after all these years of spending time in God's Word, that the more you study His Word, the more He reveals to you. This book is a gold mine. It's a treasure map in life. And just because you've read a few passages, it doesn't mean that you've mined all the gold out of it. There's still plenty there. There are plenty of treasures in the Word of God that you haven't even tapped into yet. And it's right there waiting for you, waiting for you to dive in and find it. Number six is the very real power of prayer. Pray before you read your Bible. Ask the Spirit of God to speak to you through your time in his word. A prayer that I use is from Psalm 119, verse 18. That's where David prayed, open my eyes, God, that I might see wondrous things out of your law. Just make that your little brief prayer. And then as you read, be listening to the Holy Spirit and be expectant, expect him to speak to you. It's a conversational approach to our relationship with God. We draw near and pray, like he says in James 4, verse 8, where he says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. And then he speaks to us through his word and then we speak to him through prayer. And that can go on and on as you pray, read, pray, read, pray, read. You pray and read. And then as the spirit of God brings up something in your spirit, just stop right there and talk to him about it. You know, when I first came to the Lord, I wasn't sure how to pray to a God who already knew all my needs and all my problems and all the changes that needed to come into my life. I mean, like, what could I tell him? Thank God I had a great pastor. My pastor taught me that God doesn't need prayer. I need prayer. I'm the one who needs prayer. God's in heaven, he said. You know, he's doing fine, but I'm down here on earth. And if I'm going to be fine, I need to draw near to God in prayer. And prayer is something that I need. It's not something that God needs. Prayer doesn't change God. It changes the person who prays. So when we openly and honestly pray, it reveals the reality of our heart. It shows our dependency on God. A person who is not aware of their neediness for God is a person who will not pray. Power key number seven, knowing that Jesus himself is praying for you. You know, when I pray, it doesn't change God's heart. It changes my heart. Hebrews 7, though, in verse 25, Hebrews 7, 25 says that Jesus is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. I mean, right now, right this minute, Jesus Christ is praying for you. He sees your situations. He knows your struggles. He sees your problems. He's touched by your weaknesses and hurts and your infirmities and your struggles. And he's bringing all your needs to the Father. We bring our needs to God in the name of Jesus Christ. And Jesus is agreeing with those prayers, bringing them to the Father on our behalf. That's intercession. And eight, the ability and the inevitability 
of miracles and answers to prayer. I can tell you this, we can't touch people's hearts. We can't change their hearts, but we can touch the one who can touch their heart. He can touch the heart of that ungodly spouse. He can touch the heart of that wayward child, wherever they are. He can touch the heart of that difficult person at work. And we can touch the heart of the one who touches the hearts of the many. People who feed on the word of God, people of prayer, people of worship, tend to see the invisible hand of God and miracles from the unseen realm way more consistently than those who neglect the word and who don't hardly pray and who don't spend time in worship. But when you tap into the supernatural power of the word of God, of prayer and worship, you'll be welcoming God into your life and circumstances and you will see his wondrous works. When we draw near to God, he draws near to us. He loves you. He's your helper. He's your comfort. He's your strength. He's the source of all that's good in your life. And he loves you. Whether you feel like it or not, you're greatly loved by God. God has a heart for you and for all that pertains to you. And he will reveal it to you and in you. That's all I've got for you today. God bless you. Remember to always pray for us. We need it and we love it and know that we pray for you. We hope you were blessed, inspired, and challenged by what you heard today. And we pray that God spoke some inspired truths into your heart. This ministry is supported by your gifts and donations. If you'd like to help us spread the good news, you can give at our website, www.theworshipcenter.org. Or you can text to give at 301-637-0777. It's easy and takes only seconds to set up. Thank you for listening and God bless you and your family.